know, it is um, really good to be here. I'm really glad. I'm just honored to be able to be with y'all um, for a number of reasons. But one of those reasons is um, it is just remarkable to be in the presence of people who just give and serve. One thing I noticed, though, is, is that uh, maybe when you're in a gathering like this, a gathering of people who consistently give and you're someone who consistently gives, um, there's a number of things we can do. One, one is we can have that posture of like, yeah, that's right, I do give, so give to me now. That's kind of a thing, right? That's like, yeah, I'm, or, or it's the looking around the room and say, well, I put on retreats, let's see how you guys do. Like that kind of thing. But there's also, there's also this temptation a lot of times. That temptation that is, as I look around the room, all I can see is my own failure. I just want to start off with this. Just, well, this is the first point. There's a couple. Uh, the first one is this. Just to, to kind of get kind of the context, um, I've had the honor to be able to go to Israel a number of times. And one of the things that we'll typically do is we get to Cana. And if there's any couples in the group, uh, the couples get to renew their wedding vows. And, and it's one of those things. In fact, I just did this recently in my hometown, this couple came up and said, it's our 29th wedding anniversary Can we re uh, today. Can we renew our wedding vows? I'm like, that's great. Yeah, number 29, very special. Um, <laughs> but what happened with them was what happens with all these couples in, well, in Cana. No, not, not every couple, but many of them. As they come before each other and they're holding each other's hands and they're, they're repeating their vows. One of the things I've noticed is that it is incredibly rare that they actually look at each other when they say their vows. Which is so different because I do a lot of weddings. And at weddings, I mean, they are just right in each other's eyes. I mean, they, they're like, yes, gazing, like this is it. We're saying it was I, Jack, take you, Jill. You know, I, Jill, take you, Jack. But then when they're renewing their vows, it's I, Jack, do this, Jill, to Jill. I, Jill, do this, Jack. And... And, and, and that doesn't shock me, and it also doesn't, I don't look, I don't think negatively about that, because I just, I guess last month, like a lot of the priests, had my ordination anniversary. And when people make a big deal about it, I, I really, I hate it. I hate when people make a big deal about my anniversary, because when it gets brought up, all I can think about is how I've failed. And congratulations, da 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 the happy anniversary. All I can think about is all of the times that I've failed to be the priest that I want to be, that I know God called me to be. I think this is the same reason why these couples, as they're holding each other's hands, they don't look each other in the eyes. Because on their wedding day, it's like, yes, I promise all these things. And now here we are, five years later, 10 years later, 29 years later. I'm going to say the same words, but you know the truth now. And I want to do the same. I want to honor you and love you and all these things. But you now know the truth. Yes, on our wedding day, you knew that I was a broken person. On our wedding day, I knew you were a broken person. But now we really know in which ways we're broken people. And it's sometimes hard to look each other in the eye and say, okay, I'm still here. So I, I take all of that. And bring it to, here, to a place like this, the, you know, the Bosco Conference, where there's all these people who serve and all these people who, like, are faithful. And I look around and I'm like, oh my gosh, but I try so hard and I just fail so much. And so one of the things we can do is we can focus more on our failure than we can on the Lord. I see, the, the, a lot of times we say, focus more on our failure than we do on our victories. That's not the point. Focus more on our failures than we do on the Lord. We'll get back around to this in a second, but over last weekend, not this weekend, the weekend before, I was able to get, it's 4th of July weekend, and I was able to go home uh, to be with my, my, my parents and uh, a bunch of my sisters and their husbands and their kids, and my brother was back there with his wife and their kids, and it was so funny because, like, the, the age ranges are from, I think, 22 down to 2 um, of my, my nieces and nephews, and so you can see this development level uh, as it's, they have developed, which is super good, um, and because, because uh, the, the young, oh my gosh, Lucy, Lucy is great. 
Lucy is a, of a particular, I think she's five, somewhere in there. Um, she's my sister Sarah's daughter. And Lucy, at one point, Lucy had done something with, with her plate. This was at supper time. Lucy had done something with her plate. And um, her mom said, because you know, all the kids, this is great. Sorry, I'm going to make a point at some point. Um, <laughs> so my brothers-in-law are like really good cooks. And so they take care of all the food. I'm like, can I help? Like, no, nope, you're good. I'm like, okay, I'll just have my beer. And then my niece's nephews are so trained that they clean the dishes. So I'm like, can I help? Like, no. I go, have my beer. I don't have to do anything. It's, ba- it's amazing. Again, that wasn't really a point either, but we're getting back to this. Because the kids have to do something. So Lucy, five or so, at one point her mom said, Lucy, put your plate back on the table. You need to clean, to clean up. And she did one of these things where she slammed her plate on the table, and they had a bunch of, I don't know, like, you know, juices from fruit and stuff. So it was red, and it banged off the table and landed on the white carpet. Because, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. How about you put white carpet in your dining room? <laughs> Good thinking, Mom. And, uh, and it flipped over, landed upside down, all this over. And she started walking away, like, in a huff. Like, I don't care about this. She's, I'm leaving. And her mom was like, Lucy, you know, it was really bad. Lucy, get back here. And she did that kind of, like, side, like, do I get back? I'm mad, but I'm in trouble. Like, as she's walking away, like, no, I'm not going to walk back. And, and I was just like, this panic that she had because she knows yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep walking because I am mad. But also, I should turn around right now. But mom is mad. I don't know what to do. So I'm going to settle into my into my mad. Uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to settle into my mad. I'm going to do my thing because her mom told her no. This is one of those interesting things. When it comes to growing, we have to learn how to do a number of things. One of those is we need to learn how to manage our emotions, obviously. Another thing is we need to learn how to hear the word no and not be crushed by it. We need to learn how to hear the word no, how to be told no, and that doesn't destroy our relationship. When I think about this, not only in terms of, you know, as, you're, as we're being raised, as, as kids of our parents, let's look at this in terms of our relationship with the Lord. A sign of maturity, a sign of maturity, is God is able to tell me no, and it doesn't break our relationship. A sign of immaturity is God doesn't have my permission to tell me no. That I can hold him hostage. Because he has to do what I I want. But a sign of maturity is that God actually gets to tell me no, and it doesn't affect our relationship. Does that make sense? I think a lot of us are in this place where I realize that that's what God's calling me to. He's calling me to a new place in my life. He's calling me to to a place where, I mean, it's not like a new place. Like, he's going to start saying no from now on. Like, no, he's been saying no a lot. But he's calling us to a place where when he says no, That doesn't even affect our relationship in the slightest. If he can't tell me no, then we don't have a real relationship. If God can't tell me no to a desperate prayer, then we don't have a mature relationship. So we have to ask the question, if I struggle with God telling me no, Why? If I still struggle with God telling me no, what am I struggling with? It could be because I really want this thing and I just really have a lot of desire for whatever that thing is. It could be because I love someone else and I'm really begging God to help them. That can be real. But what is it that I'm really struggling with when God tells me no? You know, in in the first reading, it's it's, it's phenomenal. It also has a lot of names. Um, I don't know if you tracked along with it. Maybe if you had your Magnificat and like prayed with it five times this morning, like, okay, I got it. They're talking about three distinct people. They're talking about um, Ahaz, the king of Judah. Ahaz, by the way, bad king. Like one of the worst kings. Just super bad. Um, not super bad, like awesome, but like super terrible. Um, Ahaz, bad. And then you have Rezin, the king of Aram, which is basically Syria. And then you have um, Pekah, the king of uh, Israel, right? So the divided kingdom. So Ahaz is the kingdom of Judah, the two tribes in the south. And Pekah is the, <laughs> Pekah, true. He is the, he, he is the king of Israel, the ten tribes in the north. And so what happens is Syria, or, and also a bunch of different names, right? 
sometimes they call it Israel, sometimes they call it Ephraim. Like, please, Isaiah, just make it clear. That's my job. Here, so, um, you have resin and pika again. <laughs> no, I can't not think of Pikachu. Um, who, who unite to attack the two tribes of Judah. And so here is Isaiah coming to Ahaz, the bad king, horrible king. The best thing that Ahaz does is he um, has a son who becomes a decent king. That's, that's the best thing he does. But here's I Isaiah coming to Ahaz and saying, okay, what you're going to do, what you want to do, is you want to make an alliance with Assyria because you think that if you make an alliance with Assyria, then you'll be strong enough to fight against uh, Pika and Reza. But I'm here to tell you this already. He, goes even, he even goes on to say, they went up to attack Jerusalem. They were not able to conquer it. For all intents and purposes, to everything that, that Ahaz could see, the kingdom of Syria and the kingdom of Israel were monstrous kingdoms. I mean, monsters in, 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 this, in his sight. They, they are they're overwhelming in, in their force. They're overwhelming in their power, overwhelming in their strength. There is no way that two tribes of Judah, the two tribes down south where Ahaz is the king, there's no way that they could actually fight and defeat these two nations coming against them. But God says to me, he says, I love this, he says, let not your courage fail before these two stumps of smoldering brands. Like to you, yeah, they're massive kingdoms descending upon Judah. To me, they're just two stumps of smoldering brands. They're, they're nothing. What I'm going to ask you to do is not make an alliance with Assyria. What I'm going to ask you to do is simply trust me. Because here's, here's, here's what it is, right? Why doesn't God get to tell me no? Because I don't trust him. Why does God not have my permission to tell me no without our, our relationship going into a tailspin? Because I don't trust him. Like if we truly got to that place where we were able to say, Lord, you know the best. And you will not abandon me in the worst. So here is what I desire. Here's what I, my heart longs for. Here's what I think is the best thing for this other person. But if you say no, I'm still yours. That's why it's not a matter of, I'm just going to look to my own failures. Or I'm going to look to my own victories. It's, no, it's, it's instead of looking at my own failures as we look around this room, I'm just going to look to Jesus. I mean, to really, to truly, we're going to land the plane right now. To be able to begin this day be, and, and continue this week with this, this mentality, this, this mindset, this, this view that says this. It says, I'm not going to measure my failures or my victories against the people around me. I'm not going to even measure my victories or my failures against myself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to learn from my failures and I'll look to the Lord. Because the thing he wants the most from you is not more service. The thing he wants the most from you is not more work. The thing he wants most from you is, is, is not more productivity or more conversions and more disciples that you make. What he wants from you is your heart. The most important thing, most valuable thing you can do for the Lord this week and when you go home with your entire life is not give him more disciples. It's not give him more Bible studies. It's not give him more youth that come to know him. The most important thing you can give him is yourself, is your heart, is your trust. And just hear Jesus' voice as he's speaking to Bethsaida and to Chorazin. He says, woe to you, Bethsaida, woe to you, Chorazin. Why? Because if the mighty works done for you had been done in, in Sodom and Gomorrah, they would have repented. The big question, basically, you hear Jesus asking is, what more do I need to do to prove to you that you can trust me? And this is the question. We're here today, this week, and every single one of us, every single one of us struggles with holding on to something. We struggle with looking back into the eyes of our beloved and saying, Jesus, once again, I'm yours. And I promise to love you for the rest of my life, knowing we're going to fail. 
But what more do we have, what more does he have to do to prove to us that we can trust him? All he wants, all he wants this week and all he wants for the rest of your life is that mature relationship where he can say to us, yes, and he say, I trust you, Jesus. And he can say to us, wait, and he can say, I trust you, Jesus. And he can say to us, I love you, but no. And he say, I trust you, Jesus.